Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I think we've already had a look at sort of a, a few people have talked about the area of the carbon landscape, and, and this was really intended originally for a, an audience who um, perhaps were unfamiliar with, with, with the area. But um, so, some of you may know that I uh, worked on the From Grey to Green project, and uh, during that period we, we were running a lot of... Um, wildlife recording events across Wigan and Salford and we had a bit of a gap a couple of years and uh, so it's really good to be back back in back in Wigan and uh, also getting around to to look at sites in Salford and uh, Warrington as well so I've, I've been going down to Walston Eyes probably for probably best part of 25 years I think from my permit number you know how long I've been going down there so so it's really fantastic for me personally to be sort of involved you know working in this area um, if you look on the map you can see sites of biological importance are the um, the red boundaries so we've got an incredible variety of those starting with Wigan flashes up in the northwest coming down through Pennington flash over to the Mosslands and unfortunately, we've got a, a, a big gap there at the moment, uh, which is called Warrington. So apologies for uh, Warring Warringtonians, uh, if that's the right word. But um, yeah, we, we have been trying for some time to get the boundaries of this, of the uh, sites of biological importance in Warrington, but haven't uh, succeeded so far. So uh, hopefully they'll be with us soon. Science project we started in July last year. It's going to run for three years, but the aim is that the people, the volunteers who are taking part in the surveys, that they're going to carry on for many, many years to come into the future. So, uh, yeah, project's just for three years. So what we're basically doing is we're, we're gathering data through structured, repeatable surveys. And, and the aim of that is that basically this will enable us to compare data collected from one site with another site um, because we know the same methods have been used to, to collect the data basically okay and in terms of species we, we're going to come on in a minute into this onto the species that we're looking at but it, it's basically protected and priority species and the reason that we're going to collect this data is is partly so we can measure the success of the restoration and habitat creation okay so winter farm and bird survey has been keeping our volunteers busy over the winter uh, it was the first the first big survey that we launched um, many of you will know that the, the mosslands are still an important area for, for farm and birds um, so we've got some fantastic species like yellowhammer tree sparrow um, and, and these, these, these species are declining, so w one of the problems that they face is poor overwinter survival, and that is, is down basically to a, to a lack of food uh, in the environment. So, so what we've been doing is we've actually been getting the volunteers to go out and record the crop types and, and look at the fields, uh, you know, what's actually growing in the fields where, where they're recording the birds. And we, we've come across this new uh, wonder crop um, called canary grass. I don't know if any of you have ever seen this growing in any of the fields in the Mosslands, but um, it's been planted uh, last year by a number of farmers for, for the first time. And, and, and as you can see, if you look at the field on the left, uh, you can see how waterlogged it is. Um, so the farmers basically had a problem that they weren't able to harvest the crop and um, that turned out to be a bonanza for the, uh, the local birds. Um, if you look at the seed head, you can see how, how rich that is. You know, it's a re really sort of chunky piece of, uh, of seed for the birds. And it was quite, quite amazing that um, the planting of this crop combined with the inability to harvest it also coincided with a massive influx of finches from the continent so it was a perfect combination really um, and the volunteers have been out recording these birds um, th this is just part of one flock that was uh, 
was photographed and for the um, the sort of the birders amongst you you may recognize down there a few brambling in the bottom uh, left hand corner but mo most of this flock is actually uh, chaffinches and goldfinches and we've we've had some really really massive flocks you know up to a thousand birds in in a single flock which is re really really impressive you know quite quite amazing really okay yes yeah, so um couldn't possibly talk about the carbon landscape without mentioning the willow tit uh, mark champion has uh, run uh, three survey workshops for volunteers and we've had we've had about 35 people attend those and are trained up to go out and do the surveys and we're actually going to start um, this this week is, is when the surveys start so we're going to get uh, hopefully quite a bit of interesting data you, you may you may be aware that um, back in 2016 um, Mark organized a sort of a major survey of willow tit across the northwest so what we're really trying to do with this one is is to update the information and see what changes have occurred since uh, since 2016 okay but um, you, you we, we have probably something about in in the northwest we have probably about 10 percent of the uk population um, so so obviously it's really important that we we monitor this species very closely and uh, one of mark's favorite phrases is that that willow tits are rarer than giant pandas um, but uh, I think that's on a worldwide basis because we I don't think the last time I checked we had many giant pandas in the uh, carbon landscape okay <clears throat> yeah uh, another survey that we're going to launch in April is is a bittern survey um, and um, you may be aware that um, Bitterns are increasing, you know, numbers have been going up. Um, I think we've got about 160 booming males now in the UK. Um, it's always a mystery. I mean, we, we haven't got many suitable areas of habitat for bittern, but obviously Warston Eyes is a potential site with the, with the reed beds there. But what we're going to do initially this year is we're, we're organising a coordinated count at the Wigan Flashes so we need about 10 people basically to get up early one morning go out and listen listen for bitterns okay water voles um, again we, we know how, how seriously threatened this um, this lovely mammal is by particularly by American mink um, so we're going to be surveying for them uh, we're, we're actually running a workshop at uh, Risley Moss uh, in middle of April and Tony's going to be uh, Tony Parker is going to be running that for us um, so we're, we're hoping to get as many people out as possible um, to look for water voles um, we're also going to be running a plant survey and uh, th this one is uh, is based on the National Plant Monitoring Scheme so it involves um, surveyors going out, uh, walking a transit line across a one kilometre square, recording as many plant species as they can find within the square, and then doing a sort of a, a, a five metre square transect to, to look, look in more detail at, at what plants are, are in, the, in, the, in the quadrat rather. Yeah. Okay, uh, dragonflies is a, a nice uh, photo of a female black darter. I mean, we have, we have got some important sites uh, for dragonflies, Walston Eyes, Risley Moss, for example. We, we know, um, you know, there's, there's good populations, good, good numbers of dragonflies. But what's particularly interesting about this group is, um, you know, they are at the top of the food chain. So they're, they're good, they're a good indicator species of, you know, wetland quality. Um, and in addition with climate change, we've got new species sort of moving into the area. So, so it will be interesting to see what, you know, what, what new species we can, we can locate uh, through, through the surveys. Okay. So, I mean, we've had, we've had a very good response uh, 
so far to the um, to the um, the surveys that we've carried out, and we, we're trying to recruit uh, new people all the time. Um, we, we, we've got sort of uh, thanks to Paul Barrington. Paul over there, would you like to put your hand up? Yeah, Paul. Paul is the uh, data manager at the Greater Manchester Local Record Centre, and he's set up a a wonderful sort of online map, so you can you can go onto the website, uh, click on the map. And, and request a survey square and th then also you're, you're able to download all the um, the survey information from from the website okay um, so I think um, yeah there was one yeah one final thanks to uh, Debs over here Debs Wallace would you put your hand up Debs yeah so before the project started or when, when we were putting the bid together Debs did an incredible amount of work on the survey methodology and on the documentation and it, it's it's very much you know sort of what what we're using for for the current surveys yeah okay so that was all thank you yep